Hi, I'm Max Kaiser. Welcome back to On the Edge. Today in the studio, special guest, Pierre Jovanovic. Pierre is the author of Blythe Masters. It's a must read expose of the woman behind Jamie Dimon, the architect of the weapons of mass financial destruction that are blowing up the world at present. Uh, Pierre is also a journalist and a host of a hit radio program here in Paris. Pierre, welcome back to On the Edge. Bonjour, Max. Pierre, so much chaos in Europe and Society Generale, BNP, Paribas, and Credit Agricole seem to be at the heart of it. Uh, the shares are down over 50% this summer. So what's going on in the French banking sector? Well, what's going on? It's quite simple. It's the same thing like uh, what we have seen in 2008, like uh, burst tunes. Uh, we have seen the, the CEO of Société Générale and BNP, you know, uh, going to New York and everywhere saying, you know, everything is okay, don't worry. So it was exactly like in 2000, we, we saw Schwartz, for, for, for instance, you know, saying that everything was fine and his bank was down three days later. Schwartz. Uh, at the uh, Schwartz, I'm sorry, yes. So it, it's absolutely the, exactly the same situation. Uh, in 2008, uh, any time we saw uh, the, the, the price of uh, banking shares going down, uh, you know, like in, uh, in one or two weeks, you know, very fast, you know, we, we saw the end of the bank, uh, usually, or, 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 like a lemon style. Right. Uh, so uh, basically right now it's the same thing. They don't have any liquidity. Okay, so they're out of cash, they're out of dollars. They're certainly. out of dollars. And the dollars are used to finance all the credit arrangements that these banks rely on to stay open. They can't get dollars. Timothy Geithner is flying into Europe to arrange some kind of loan. His solution, Pierre, is for Europe to create kind of a, a TARP-style mega bailout. Mm. The, uh, the, the, the European... Uh, facility, credit, whatever they're calling it, some acronym. So it, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a new acronym every single day. If they, if they, if they could only monetize acronyms, they would be in a lot better shape. But uh, so how is so this Geithner solution to bring TARP <clears throat> to Europe? Is this going to work? No, uh, of course not. Uh, first of all, because uh, the Germans are the key. And right now, Angela Merkel is losing uh, every regi regional election uh, in Germany. Uh, she, she said uh, two days ago that she will pu push it, but uh, it will be extremely uh, difficult. First of all, because uh, uh, they uh, request uh, almost $2 trillion uh, in this uh, TARP, European style. Okay, hold on a second. So, you're saying two trillion dollars or two trillion euros for this TARP style bailout? Uh, two trillion euros, actually. Okay, Sorry. but this is coming from or being arranged by the IMF. We know that the IMF is bankrupt. They just announced that they're looking exactly. for a bailout. Yeah, they're looking for a bailout too. Right. So um, they're looking for a bailout so that they can bail out the banks who need to bail out the U.S. banks. So it's this huge Mobius strip of people <clears throat> bailing each other out, and it's not going anywhere. And it makes no possible sense. It's like a musical chair or something, or a game. The bankers are making a lot of money. Uh, yes, but at one point, somebody is going to blow up. And uh, at that time, at that moment, it will be the end of the game. And it seems to, to us here in Europe that we're very clo close right now. Right. You know, at, at the moment, uh, at the French banks are locked out of the Chinese market, for instance. We, we saw the other day, uh, you saw it uh, probably, uh, that uh, a big uh, state-owned uh, Chinese bank uh, didn't want to... Uh, to deal with French banks anymore, so it's a huge blow for them. Uh, Lloyd's Insurance said they are, they are taking their money out. Uh, and we saw also, you know, the big French uh, uh, mythic, uh, you, you know, uh, taking his money out. Uh, the reason, the official reason is because the French bank, the, you know, didn't give them enough uh, uh, money, you know, to... to on interest on, on it. Right. So, but uh, behind the scene, everybody knows uh, the real reason. Some of the shares, you know, they are down like 60 percent. Hello, 60 <laughs> percent. The, the the capitalization of these banks, the market capitalization for a BNP or a Society Generale, there are maybe 10 or 20 billion dollars, but they're sitting on hundreds of trillions of dollars in liabilities. We're at uh, basically, you know, the, the um, you know the the main French banks. Their capitalization is like uh, six uh, trillion dollars uh, right now, just on the on the pigs market, if I may say that. Uh, the, their exposure 
Uh, I'm not talking about uh, credit default swaps or anything, just uh, loans, regular loan or sovereign loans. Uh, there are like uh, one, already like one trillion, j just for Ireland, Italy, Spain, uh, et cetera. That's one trillion in liabilities for the so-called pigs nations. Right. The, uh, on banks, these are the liabilities. This is on their balance sheet for banks that, if you add them all together, have less than $100 billion in capitalization. On top of that, they have $100 trillion. They're part of the Absolutely. $100 trillion derivatives is, monster, absolutely. the credit default swap monster, of which they are all a part of this as well. I want to return to your analogy of the musical chairs. Uh, back in 2008, it seemed as though the musical chairs game was on, the music stopped, Lehman Brothers didn't have a place to sit down, it went bankrupt. Bear Stearns didn't have a place to sit down. So it, it basically went bankrupt. Now the music started up again, fueled by easy credit from Ben Bernanke and other central bankers who keep that interest rate policy at zero. Mm. What you're saying is that the music is about to stop again, mm. and it's just a guessing game who will be the, the, the bank to fail. It looks like it'll be a French bank, and it, would you agree with that? And then what will be the, the, the ripple effect? It might, it might be a French bank, but it also could be an Italian bank like uh, Unicredit. Uh, the problem, there's another problem with the French banks, with BNP and Société Générale, uh, which nobody talks uh, about too much, is there uh, specifically the BNP and Société Générale exp exposure on, in Russia. Uh, which is quite bad. So they're trying to, you know, to get rid uh, uh, of, of it. it. It might be difficult. Okay, but this is something this that is this has not been reported widely. No. BNP's exposure to Russia. Let's break that down because this is something that viewers probably have not heard. So walk us through what BNP's exposure to Russia is. Um, they bought, uh, I. They, they bought like um, three or four years ago uh, uh, a chain, a big bank uh, with like a four or five hundred, if I remember well. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, and right now, this uh, the Russian market became extremely difficult. They also have the crisis. So, and this bank and the branches of these banks, they, you know, didn't bring uh, bring them uh, the money uh, they expected. So this is also. Uh, playing uh, a very bad game on their balance sheet. Okay, I mean, so this is serious, and I, nobody's talking about it. I would imagine that the f the Russian bank acquisition has a big exposure to the we, oil we business, of course. The entire Russian economy is exposed to the oil yeah, business. Yeah, but it's not as easy because we saw, like, uh, what, two months ago, Bank of Moscow, uh, which it was like a Lehman effect, and uh, it was Dmitry Medvedev who saved it, you know, at, uh, uh, God knows how, uh, but it was the, the the game was over for this bank, so for that bank. So what you're describing here is what people call counterparty risk. Yes. In other words, all these banks are tied together using what they call counterparty risk. They all make these huge leverage bets, and they and they insure the bets by doing things like credit default swaps that are guaranteed by other banks. And um, so when one of these banks collapses, it causes a credit to freeze. Now, here in France, I remember going back to the Societe Generale scandal with Jerome Creville. Mm -hmm. Now, he was caught trading above his limit, yes. basically. They found him trading above his limit. Uh, they caught him. Uh, they prosecuted him. And they fired him. And he had to serve some jail time, as I, as I understand it. Now, doesn't the current CEO of Societe Generale and BNP, aren't they doing exactly the same thing as Jerome Carville? They're trading above their limits. Well, they, they have done that for a long time. But look, look to this point, specifically regarding Carville. Uh, this happened uh, in February of 2000, 2008. At that time... Uh, Monsieur Bouton, Daniel Bouton, you know, who was the CEO of uh, Société Générale, you know, he screamed, you know, saying, you know, he's a terrorist, you know, we lost, you know, like four or five billion euros. But if you remember well, and I do, uh, speci specifically on that case, is that at the same time, uh, some banks in Singapore, um, you, uh, some sweet, big Swiss bank, uh, German banks, uh, you know, they were all looking for recapitalization, recapit you know, uh, saying, you, you know, we are going to gr uh, grow, so we need more money. But in fact, they were already losing tremendous amount of, of money, but they, they didn't dare to say it. So right now, 
everybody knows what, what the game is, and they cannot lie as much as they lied in 2008. That's why right now, October, uh, October and November is extremely, extremely dangerous, especially right now in Europe and in Paris. Now, isn't it true, uh, going on this Jerome Creville case, that as the result of the disclosure of his, of his trading limit violation, the bank was forced to disclose some um, trades that they had yes. on the books that they took, were forced to take losses on, and the yes. bank took some heavy losses for the quarter. And as a result, however, their balance sheet was cleaned up to some extent. Had Jerome Creville, uh, in other words, had the bank uh, simply continued on as it was doing anyway, even if Jerome Creville wasn't working at the bank at all, the bank was simply doing what it ordinarily does, which is to trade above its trading limits on a daily basis. The CEO and board of directors guilty of this every day. The bank, Society General, would have been bankrupt already. So didn't Jerome Creville, in a, say, in a, in a sense, save Society General from declaring bankruptcy at least for 18 months. <laughs> well, that's a point of view, and it's an interesting point of view. Um, maybe, uh, but, but you know, uh, you know what the the rule of the game. If you are not caught, you know. Yes. Nobody knows. Well, you wrote so. this book, uh, Blythe Masters, and of course, Blythe Masters is the uh, the woman on Wall Street who more or less invented credit default swaps. We have a, another female on, in the center stage in, in the world of finance now, Christine Lagarde, yes. who is, comes out of the Chicago school. She comes out of the neoliberal school. She seems to be cut from the same cloth as Blythe Masters. Is that a fair characterization? Um, um, Christine Lagarde is quite di di different. Uh, f first of all, it's very interesting to see her speaking in French and speaking in English. She is totally fluent, of course, in, in English. When she speaks in, uh, in French, she is uh, like, you know, some marquise, you know, everything is okay, don't worry, blah, blah. And when she speaks in English, she's extremely sharp. She's very, very smart. Uh, there's a, a strength. She, uh, she, she did a very, very good job, actually, uh, right now in, uh, in, uh, as a minister of finance in France. And I think she is going to do a tremendous job uh, at the IMF, you know, at least, you know, because, look, she, she was the one who, who said, like, uh, one week ago or two weeks ago, uh, you know, the European banks needs recapitalization right now. And everybody was screaming, even Trichet, you know, this is, you cannot say that, you know, Madame, where, <laughs> who do you think you are? Yes. Tell, you know, and she just broke the game, you know. She was then taken backstage by Tim Geithner mm -hmm. and read the riot. Act, and and she changed her tune quickly. So her her initial um, coming out of the the box, you know, being aggressive, it seems now she's playing the game. But that's that's the way she 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 works. So let me get this straight: when she speaks French to French people, she mollycoddles the French people and she babies them. Yes. But when she talks to the English-speaking world, she speaks like a man. Yes. As a French person, how does that make you feel? I mean, it's very strange. It's like you, you know, some uh, like uh, some uh, Roman uh, deity, you know, like Janus with a, well, a person with two faces. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's let's talk about Sarkozy for a second, because during this recent chapter in the crisis, one thing that has uh, he has made a stand for. He seems very interested in saving Greece, uh, much more so than Germany. <laughs> why, why is that? <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, we have uh, almost uh, 57 billion of dollars of uh, 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 risk uh, <laughs> in Greece. <laughs> Greece. So it says it all. You know, they, uh, you know, let's say the Société Générale, BNP, and Credit, uh, mostly Credit Agricole, because Credit Agricole bought, you know, uh, a, a Greek bank with, uh, you know, like 100 or 200 branches. I don't remember, but they're just going to explode. You know, uh, Credit Agricole has, uh, you know, has have a very strong leverage effect also on this. So this is going, th this is quite dangerous right now, and we can feel it. Okay, when you talk about dangerous, and you're talking about Europe, uh, you're talking about a continent that has spent hundreds of years slaughtering each other uh, for political reasons throughout history. The purpose of the euro was supposed to make everyone friendly and love each other and that would have put an end to wars in Europe. And during the good times, it seemed like that was happening. 
But now that it's falling apart again, are the old animosities going to uh, rise up? It, what about France and Germany? Are they going to solve this without any acrimony? I mean, <laughs> what, what, no, I don't think so. I, I, I really don't think so. But there is uh, uh, right now we can see the eurozone uh, to be di divided uh, in two. Uh, basically, the no, uh, euro. Uh, we can say that we have the euro of north, you know, north countries like uh, Germany, uh, you know, uh, uh, Scandinavian country, and, and, and so forth, and you have. Uh, Greece, <laughs> Portugal, <laughs> uh, Ireland, you know, all these countries, so they, can, they, they just don't make it. So, because, and that's why the euro is going to explode. It's impossible to keep, you know, it's, it's like you're in a roving, you know, like a Cambridge, you know, uh, uh, you know on, the, on, the, on the Thames, and you have just one guy rowing, and all the others just are smoking their cigarettes. I mean, it doesn't make sense. You know, you cannot sell that to people in every country, no matter if it's Germany or Portugal or Greece. Nobody mm. wants to pay forever for, you know, and right now it's Germany who is paying for everybody. Mm. And Germany is rowing for everybody. All right, let's, let's talk about the various scenarios and, you know, let's see if I can name them all in terms of what could be the future for the euro. There'd be number one would be the euro remains intact and they save the euro. Number two is they split the euro into a northern euro and a southern euro, as you've just talked about. Mm -hmm. Number three would be that Germany opts out of the euro completely. And now they say we're a reunified Germany, we're going to bring back the Deutschmark, and we're going to go it alone. Um, and then another option would be that you start to see a splintering, like Greece, for example, drops out of the euro, and maybe another country on a one-by-one -one basis drop out of the I euro. I think this is the, the best scenario, the, spl the splintering, because, uh, as you know, uh, Angela Merkel uh, uh, has her elections uh, in 2013. Uh, so uh, let's say that somebody else is elected and somebody who is against uh, the euro, you know, the game will be over. So we cannot, you know, we, we don't know because of all these elections. Uh, as, you, as an American, you know, you think like, a, uh, you, you know that because every time, you know, the Republicans are, uh, are leaving uh, and Democrats are in, you know, they change the whole thing. So in Europe, it's even worse uh, most of the time. And uh, the, splint, the splitting, you know, uh, is the most, mm, I think, normal scenario in this case. But here's the big issue with that is, and we talked about it already in terms of counterparty risk. In other words, these economies are so integrated. Yes. It, they are mirror images of each other in terms of their balance sheets and the mm -hmm. risk and the way that this market trades. So to take a Greece out of the equation suddenly would be to something, it would be to put it in a French term, an existential nightmare. <laughs> it would be like removing cold from ice. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're so intertwined with each other. If you just take one out of the picture, you will have that counterparty explosion. So there has to be a group uh, effort. However, as you just described it, you've got Germany rowing in the boat. Mm. Everyone else is smoking, mm. especially in France. Mm. And uh, so it just it seems like we're headed for a brick wall and chaos. Yeah, I think it will be chaos. Um, but uh, l d don't forget this, <laughs> this point, you know, regarding the existential. Uh, Jean uh, Sartre said, you know, hell, you know, it's the others. So, uh, <laughs> you know, this is typical Europe and nowhere. We have it right now. Uh, you, you know, um, Germany uh, cannot afford uh, to, you know, to lose all, all, all his ties with France and with uh, uh, Denmark, Nor Nor uh, La Norvège, and the other countries. Uh, he, Germany can afford you know, to lose Greece or Portugal, but they cannot afford everything. They cannot uh, l leave, uh, you know, l l leave alone. But uh, take an example of what happened in, in, in the 30s. You, you know, the uh, Republic de Weimar, uh, uh, Germany needed to pay you know, war expenses. And it, just, it was too expen uh, expensive for them. So the, 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 the German Central Bank said, you know, okay, we're not going to pay. I mean, but we're going to, <laughs> to, to just uh, printing money and printing money and printing right. money. And uh, that made, you know, the whole Europe after the war, it was just a nightmare. Yeah, no, don't forget that. That's, That's quite absolutely. interesting. Mm -hmm. So we're in a kind of uh, same situation. Ambrose Evans, oh, preacher. From the Telegraph. Uh, yeah, from the Telegraph. He said, you know, I remember he, he wrote one time, you know, the, 
Uh, the bad news is that we're in uh, uh, 1931. You know, the good news is that we're not in uh, 1933 or 34. So, but right now we're in uh, 33 or 34. So that I'm really, uh, I'm really scared uh, of what is going to happen right now in October. I really fear a, a big explosion somewhere. Uh, e either if, if it's Bank of America, Citibank, uh, Société Générale, BNP, uh, Unicredit, w one of those, or maybe something else, which is going to rip, uh, have a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, as we've been talking about now, um, I've been reading a lot from James G. Rickards who's a very well-read financial pundit in the U.S. and as well as a money manager. And he's coming out with his book uh, talking about currency wars. And, yes. and he's really positioned, and this is something you hear more and more, that there is, this is a, a war going on. It's a currency war. Of course it's a war. And similar to the 1930s, where, where the Weimar Republic, they inflated, they tried to inflate their way out of Financial those war reparations war. that they deemed completely unpayable. Mm -hmm. It created the depression as we know mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, so um, why are policymakers so slow to respond, especially Ben Bernanke in the United States? He says he's a student of the Depression, and yet he seems to be stumbling into a repeat of the Depression. Uh, well, he, he perfectly knows, you know, what he's talking about, so, uh, because he don't have the choice. You know, the dollar is dead. Everybody knows that. But the dollar is not dead. The dollar is being bought up in large quantities to unwind all these financial products. Yeah, but right, right now, you know, the dollar is like a uh, Weimar Republic, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> this is absolutely a very strange situation. Uh, everybody knows that the dollar is doomed. Uh, everybody knows that the euro is doomed somehow. So you, you need to, you know, you need to choose between uh, cholera and uh, the AIDS. <laughs> so it's quite, it's, All right, so you have to choose bizarre. between, between <laughs> cholera and AIDS. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, that's, really? a, that's, a, that's an interesting choice. Uh, but I see your point. Uh, it's a lose-lose situation. Yes. After so many Definitely. years it's a of lose, the... Lose situation. Look, look, look what happened in Switzerland. I mean, this, uh, they made this uh, weird decision, you know, to peg, you know, the, the, the Swiss franc to the euro. My God, you know. Yeah. Right. Thanks God, they have the Geneva Convention left. <laughs> it's not just cuckoo clocks anymore. Well, that, you know, that's all the time we have for. we got to say goodbye. <laughs> Merci, Max. That's going to do it for this edition of On the Edge with me, Max Kaiser. I want to thank my guest, Pierre Jovanovic. Uh, pick up his book on Blythe Masters. If you want to send me an email, please do so at ontheedge at pressTV.com. Until next time, this is Max Kaiser saying bye, y'all.